Hi all, I'm Age from Liquid Earth, a channel all about video and photography. I've been using CapCut for quite a while now, and I use it when I'm editing more than just the basics. It has all the basic functions and tons of effects, which is why I like it too. But if you want more advanced features such as speed ramping, where you can speed up and slow down your footage smoothly, picture in picture, or adding keyframes to create some movement in maybe photos or a still video, it has lots of advanced features. It's totally free. There's no adverts, there's no in-app purchases. They don't even put a watermark on your end video, which is great. Here's eight of the things that I use all of the time in the advanced features. Eight top tips, let's take a look. Tip number one is picture in picture, and it's really simple. It's actually an overlay, and you can add up to six overlays in CapCut. If you tap the overlay and then add overlay, choose your image or overlay that you want. That adds it onto the screen and then you can scroll or pinch with your fingers just to resize it. Tap and move it to wherever you like. Press play to see how that looks. There you go, we've got the overlay on top. If you tap, tap and hold and drag, you can place it anywhere you like on your screen there. This is ideal for gaming if you're adding reactions or YouTubing if you're creating a tutorial. Tip number two is green screen. So I've downloaded this from VidEasy very simply and it's a green screen. It doesn't have to be green, it can be any color you like. I can resize that here, but before I do that, to get rid of the green part, we use chroma. Tap that, you've got a color picker on screen, so you place that on the solid color background, whether it's blue, green, or any other color, and then intensity, change your intensity until the green goes away, and press the tick. If we just make sure that the subscribe button is in place, Let's make that a bit smaller, centralize that at the bottom. And now we've removed the green part. We can play that. And you've got a little subscribe button that comes on screen. Really cool. Tip number three is how to add animations or movement with keyframes. And this is really simple. This is a video and you can do it with videos or photos. Select whatever image or video that you like, and then position your cursor where you want to add your first keyframe. Let's start at the very beginning and I'm going to add a keyframe to this video here. Now it's a still video, but if I go to the very end and add another keyframe, make that larger, you don't have to tap the keyframe, it'll put one in automatically as soon as you scroll or zoom. I'm pinching now with my fingers just to zoom in a little bit here, reposition that, and now when I go to the very beginning, press play, it scrolls in according to the keyframes that you've added. If you want to, you can adjust the keyframes, just move the image. Maybe I want to zoom in and move to the right as well. And that's keyframing for you. You can also add keyframes to text as well. And I'll show you in the next tip, which is tip number four, creating a slideshow. Add a new project from your CapCut. Make sure you choose photos, select all the images that you want here and then press add. That's gonna add them all to your timeline. First thing you wanna do is change your format. Press the format button. I'll choose 16 by nine here. And let's come back out of that. So now we've got the format set at 16 by nine and some of the pictures won't fill that format, but we'll deal with that in just a moment. You can use keyframes or animations or a mixture of both. Tap the first image and tap animation. Choose the in and we're gonna do an in animation here. Choose whichever one you like. You've got some little previews there roll in, I'm going to choose the duration at right at the end there, 2.4, so it's a longer duration. Press the check mark to confirm. Then for the images between the first and the last, choose combo, and then choose whichever you like, and you can click each picture and make some changes, or choose the same one, whichever you want to do. But for the last image, we're going to choose out. Let's select the last image here and choose an option. I'll choose the very simple fade out. I'm gonna change the duration to about three quarters or so across. Tap the check mark, delete this end screen here, which you don't want, and then we can make the last image a bit longer. You can do that to any of the images, and then that fades out at the very end. Maybe you want to add some text to your slideshow. Tap on the text button, add text. Choose an effect if you wish. Let's choose this one here. I'm gonna make this jump out onto the screen. 
So we're going to start small. We're going to use the keyframes again here. So we'll start small right over at the corner there. Let's rotate that round a little bit. I'll press my check mark. Now I've added the text, I want to tap the keyframe to add a start point. Go to the end. In fact, if I move this first, I want that text to line up with the very first image here. Now I'm going to go to the end, move my keyframe. Maybe something like this. Add an effect to it if you like. Tap in animation. Again, you'll see lots of options there. Choose whichever one takes your fancy. Change the timing again by using the slider and tap the check mark. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's looking great so far. Tapping on this image, I'm going to add some keyframes to this as well because I want to move it over a little bit to the right hand side. So I'll add my start and then I'm going to tap and drag this over a little bit to the right hand side to give you enough room for the text there. Do the same for the end image or end text if you wish to. Add another animation. This time I'll choose a different one. I quite like this flip and jump. Change the duration again. Press tick and now we've got our animation at the very end. Before you finish, you'll want to add a background. So click on the canvas. You can either add background or blur, actually. I'm going to choose a blur, apply to all, press the tick. And now for each image, you've got a blurry background there. And here's the final version. So we've got some nice text animation coming in. And we've used a combination of effects and keyframes. And I've added some transitions and you can do that by pressing the little squares in between. Choose a transition and then apply to all. Tip number five is speed ramps. Choose the image that you like and tap on speed. And then instead of normal, which gives you up to 100 times or 0.1, choose curve instead. There's lots of templates you can choose or you can tap on the custom and edit and create your own. And now all you do is you scroll through the timeline and you add speed ramps. Higher is faster, lower is slower. You can click anywhere on your timeline and add a beat. Add as many as you like here, and then you can go through your timeline, get the right spot, and start adding all of your speed ramps. Once you're finished, press the tick. Here's an idea of how this one came out. So I've sped up as Mila's facing away and slowed it down when she's facing the camera. And then at the very end, we've slowed it down. And that's speed ramps. Tip number six is reverse and freeze. It's another great way to make your videos really stand out. Choose a video that you like, scroll over to the right hand side and tap on copy. Tap it and reverse that. And now we've started and then we've reversed the very same image. We can also duplicate again. Let's duplicate the very first one. Pressing copy. Move that to the end. And then if you want to add a freeze in there, all you do is you get to the position that you want to add a freeze in. Tap on edit, go to the very end and tap a freeze and it will just add a frozen section and then continue after that. And you can change the length of that section as well. Give you a little example of how that's all turned out. Tip number seven is color grading with adjustment layers. If you were to choose a clip and tap on adjust, you're adding the effects just to that clip. There's a better way by adding adjustment layers. Deselect and this time choose adjust. And this will add an adjustment layer. I'll show you how that works. First, let's make some adjustments. Maybe let's increase our saturation and contrast and take our shadows up a little bit. So we've made some adjustments there. Tap on the tick. And now here's our adjustment layer. Anything above that adjustment layer is affected. So here you can see part of the same video isn't affected. And then very quickly we can add the adjustments. You can drag this over all of the clips and they're also stackable. So if you want to add another adjustment layer, you can. And that one can be applied to all of your clips or overlap or only some of the clips. It's entirely up to you. So very powerful and that's adjustment layers in CapCut. 
And the final tip, tip number eight, adding beats to music. This is really cool. So add your music in the normal way by tapping on sounds. Then you'll have a list of all of your music options. I've already added some beats, but show you how to do it. You press the play button and then just tap the beat. Press the check mark when you're done and then line up all your clips. Tap your clip and then if you want to adjust the in point and the out point, and as soon as you start to scroll, it will snap to the marker. So notice how it just snaps into place. I've done the rest, but go ahead and adjust all your clips and then press the play. There you go, that's how to add beat markers. Well, that's CapCut, more advanced features. I hope you can see why I like it so much. But if you want to see the basics, bottom left hand side, there's a link to that tutorial. And bottom right hand side, there's a playlist with some more tutorials you might like. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care.